All right, we're doing a little something different today, but it's different yet might fit into the channel and it's something that we want to go down the path of and check out. I've no. become personally I've become enamored with Anthony Bourdain as, you know, someone of bringing people together, traveling places, eating nice food, people having great company. I guess my travel bug has been uh has bitten me and i look into him for inspiration well hey man you know this guy has gotten around all across the globe so i'm here for it i know who he is uh but i've never you know what's funny i was thinking about this um today i think that i only know him from like hotel tv oh hotel like, TV. whenever i travel via either cruise ship or abroad, they usually have Anthony Bourdain playing somewhere. Oh, okay, okay. And so that's where I'm. I, I I'm already associating his name with travel, regardless of what he's doing. So, yeah, I think it's great. I think this is going to be a great chapter and a great journey to go down because food is universal. Food's universal. Traveling and discovering new places that's universal. Yep. And we figure since our uh, demographic is mostly UK. We would start with the Scotland episode of Parts Unknown. Hey, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So if if this pops off, uh, y'all let us know if y'all want us to continue on with uh, travel type stuff because we've been considering people like you know Gordon Ramsay, um, uh, the tr Travel Man uh, with Richard from uh, what's it IT Crowd? Uh, does. Is it Iyote? Iyote? something yeah, like that iode i think um that's that'd be interesting considering yeah. because it's like it opens up the world of travel and it, like if we are you know oh spence you are going to go experience another country yeah. other countries so this opens the door and lets us know maybe what we're peeking into you know yeah, and exactly. and that's what we want we want we want that so if if we're gonna do it we're gonna see this for the first time might as well see it for the first time with everyone here exactly Enough talk. You ready to go in? Yep, let's do it. Let's, three, two, one. Everything changes. Nothing changes at all. Drinking at 4.30 in the afternoon. It's the perfect time. The light is just right. It's important. Also, it's not too crowded. It's quiet. Man could have a drink in a, a pint in a dignified fashion. Free of care. Hey, son. No, thank you. There you go. Thank you so much. So you're on holiday? Uh, sort of. Is it your first time in Glasgow? No, I've been uh, a number of times before. I haven't been in uh, this pub before, though. Oldest in... Uh, 1510 was the building. 1510. Oh, man. Amazing. Wow. From my very first time, it was Glasgow. My favorite city in Scotland. One of my favorite cities on earth. I was gonna say one of my favorite cities in Europe, but is Glasgow Europe? I don't think so. It feels somehow older than that. To many outsiders, Glasgow is seen as a hard scrabble, even fearsome place, a place that history has moved on from. But there is definitely a sense here that something different is around the corner. What will be one of the most important events in Scottish and British history, 
More than four million people will decide whether Scotland should stay in the UK or become an independent country. Will Scotland stay or will it leave the union? Scottish independence could mark the beginning of the end of the UK as we know it. But in the end, 55% of Scots voted to stay in the union. That left almost half the population still hungry for independence. And with 73.5% of teenagers voting yes, England had its undies very much in a bunch over the possibility of an unraveling of the union with Scotland. It's an idea that is overwhelmingly popular in this city above all others. Glasgow's a gutsy city. I'm told there's going to be big changes. A different outlook. Regeneration, but I still hear the cries of yesterday. Why do Man, this is I didn't know it was gonna take this oh. <laughs> direction here. All right. So yeah. we're in for like a mini doc. Like, yeah, yeah. Per episode. Oh, I'm here for this, man. This is awesome. Right. Yeah, yeah. Me and Anthony Bourdain's been known to not pull any he doesn't pull any punches when it comes to his documentaries and what he says. I mean, how the first scene in that pub, like he paints a great picture of it. And, you know, that's, that's the kind of thing I'm looking for. That's the stuff I'm enamored with. Mm -hmm. And I'm, yeah, I, I, I love this because it's, it's like both culinary and what's it called? And uh, humans, human, like, like, yeah, yeah. Humanity. Yeah, like I'm there for it because I I think I need to absorb all of it, mm -hmm. you know, to get the full picture. And that's what this is, full picture. Yeah, yeah. And this is definitely a piece of that puzzle when it comes to Scotland, particularly mm -hmm. Glasgow. Mm -hmm. um, I'm pretty sure there's already Scots in the comments typing out their feelings about it. Yeah, well, I hope. I hope. It's not just for us, but yeah. I'm glad we're watching it. Together. Yeah, exactly. It's to educate. <laughs> yep. How does the possibility of independence have such a powerful hold on Glasgow? The past. Glasgow has long endured, among other things, a reputation for being the most violent area in the UK. It's a familiar cycle, analogous in many ways to what we see elsewhere. Hard times, disappearing manufacturing base, unemployment, a general sense of apathy that the government can't or won't fix what's broken that in the corridors of power in London, in Edinburgh, they just don't give a shit about Glasgow. Especially Glasgow's east side. Like a lot of cities, like most cities in fact, Glasgow is divided. The River Clyde divides the north and south sides, but the bigger, more tangible divide is between east and west. The west, things are expected to be, well, nice. Nice cars, nice families, all the nice stuff that affluence supposedly brings. East side, that's where you grow up hard, where things are rougher, where you've got, according to popular legend, to fight to live every day. In, in Scotland, if you're a young boy in Scotland and you're nine or ten and you're coming home from school and a big guy beats you up, and you run home to your mum crying. You know what she'll do? She'll give you a cuddle, and then she'll tell you to get back out there and get them. Don't let anybody ever do that to you. And if you need to get a stick, get a stick. If you need a brick, get a brick. Don't let anybody do it to you. That's what we do. And it makes us dangerous enemies, or resourceful enemies, but it also makes us very loyal allies. Mm. Detective John Carnishan. 38 years on the job, much of it as murder police on the east side. He's seen it all. Confronted with violent hooliganism, the traditional approach has always been to get out there and bust some heads, make some stats, put up some numbers, lock up some perpetrators. But after decades of dealing with generation after generation of violence, much of it gang-related, he took an unusual and controversial new tactic. Along with a colleague, John established a special unit within the Strathclyde Police called the Violence Reduction Unit and focused their efforts on the social problems that he felt led directly to violent crime. His peers, unsurprisingly, 
were dubious. But as of 2014, Scotland is at a 40-year low in violent crime. Wow. Retired from the force, Carnishan now advises law enforcement around the world. When in town, though, he likes to come here. Typical Scottish fare, Mother India. For a lamb curry simmered in spicy tomato gravy, served with traditional Scottish naan bread. Wow. See, that, that transition right there from, you know, this guy's been on the police force for 38 years, 40-year crime lows, and now, hey, here's this lamb uh, tikka. There you go. Yeah. There you go. That's how it's supposed to be done. Yeah. You know, that's... I love I love that because it's not just food. Right. It's you know, humans. It's more. It's more yeah. than that. So I, I dig that. What brings us together. Yeah. Food. I knew Glasgow was traditionally a tough town. Mm -hmm. I've always seen Glasgow as a warm, welcoming place. It's mm -hmm. always been one of my favorite places mm -hmm. in, 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 in this part of the world to visit. So do you think the town's reputation is deserved or is this a... No. I mean... In terms of the label of violence, the fights are the fights. The, 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 that, that's, that's there. But statistically, if you don't live or come from Glasgow, your chances of being a victim of, an, of a violent attack in Glasgow is something like 0.000. I've never, ever, ever felt, and I've done a fair amount of really, fair amount of stupid behavior here, a fair amount of drinking. Um, a fair amount of, 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 you know, putting myself in the sort of, you know, situations that they advise visitors to a new town to not do, right? I've, I've never, ever felt yeah. uncomfortable here. On the other hand, I could, be, I, could be, I could be wrong in that after a few drinks, I notice that I don't understand anyone. <laughs> so they could be making various threats of violence to me at the bar, and I could just be smiling and nodding. <laughs> Indian food is, of course, huge here, as it is everywhere in the UK. You could venture a guess that it's the cold, damp, and often dreary weather that causes the heart to yearn for spicy food from hotter climates. But it's more likely it began with the trade routes established by the East India Company in the 17th century and returning sailors, and that whole takeover India thing. All I can say is pass the Rogan Josh. So. How do you reduce violence? I mean, traditionally, we just need more police. Mm -hmm. Get out there, crack some skulls, throw some more people in jail, and problem solved. Yep. That's a good number of Americans probably still believe mm -hmm. that very much. We, yeah. we're, we're very fond of throwing people mm -hmm. in prison. Uh, to suggest otherwise would be seen as uh, coddling the criminals. Absolutely, and, and it was the same here. We weren't making a blind about a difference to the levels of violence. We started to think about it in an entirely different way. Violence is a public health issue. We all have the capacity for violence. People learn how not to be violent. And that's why early years is important, because things that happen then will affect their whole life course about how they make decisions about themselves and how they judge, how they judge risk. Mm -hmm. No matter how good the police service is, it will just contain and manage the problem. It won't make it better. First of all, it's not what, what I'd expect to hear from you know, somebody who spent about 38 years with murder police presumably busting heads and arresting people, um, that we should hug these little bastards? Yeah, more, absolutely. Yeah. That we should make them feel like they're worth something? Uh -huh. I mean, I get it. I believe yeah. it. Absolutely. But everything you've been saying is no way to run for office in my country. <laughs> you shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, if you say, look, this is going to take a generation, they go, oh, politicians don't know about generations. Yeah, they, they, they're they're the next election, for goodness sake. They're worried about the newscast on Monday yes. at 6 o'clock. the headlines, yep, absolutely. The truth is, we don't have it licked here either, Tony. We don't have it sorted here. Yeah. But we're on a journey. So what's going right here? Come on, this is, let's face it, this is one of the most awesome cities anywhere. People. That's how it's Yeah, that's... That, that's... I didn't expect that answer out of him, you know, to say, you know, it's a generational problem. It's not going to be fixed overnight. You know, human decency, it starts from the birth. Like that's, that, yeah. I wasn't expecting that at all. I like that mentality. It makes yeah. sense. I mean, violence is a symptom. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and you, you, um, you, you cure it and you teach it, uh, not teach violence, but you teach how to, abstain from violence at a young age 
yeah. what to do with rage and stuff like that. Yeah, deal with it in a, a healthy way. Um, yeah. and, but, but like you also, said, no one likes generational fixes. Because right, that's what right. it takes. That's what it takes. That's what it takes. You got to, you got to, because you can't, you can't, what is it? You can't teach your old, old, old dog new tricks. You right, got to let the right. old dog die. Mm-hmm, pretty much. To make any sort of change. Yeah, and there's no way that any politician would win an election, especially in this country. Like, they no. need, especially in a generation of instant gratification, there's no way it can be fixed. Yeah, there's and, no, and patience. Would, no patience. No nope. patience, no patience. Yeah. But damn, did that curry look good. It did look delicious. Yeah. It did yeah. look good. It looked yeah. like it was very, it it, it hit the soul, <laughs> uh, yeah. especially in the day that they're in. You yeah, know? it looked it's like it felt out. good. Yeah, yeah, it's like like here in America, like when it gets when it gets cold out, we tend to go to chili, like a big old vat of meaty bean spice chili with a cold beer on a on a winter day. That's that's it. That sounds good, man. That sounds good. <laughs> what are you not a chili person? Nope, I'm a soup guy. Oh, I like okay. soup. Uh, if it's not if it's if it's cold outside i'm team soup if what's it's your, hot outside fuck your soup yeah I, i'm with you there what's your go-to soup though oh my goodness i don't know i like i like tomato bisque i like a lot of tomato bisque i like those nice. those nice. thicker thicker i would uh, it's like chowders or, or soups like that uh, okay not okay. like watery like i don't know if i i can't stand chicken noodle uh just because it reminds me of being sick yeah, yeah. And so I I don't go for it. Yeah, and I ate it a lot as a kid, along with like Campbell's tomato soup, and that yep. that kind of turned me off of it. Nothing but nothing beats tomato soup and grilled cheese. That's that's a that's a staple. I love that. That's, that's another one. That's another one I had a lot growing up, and I just kind of I'm over it. I'm not a big fan of it unless it's like artisanal, like an artisanal oh, grilled yeah. cheese with like a high end tomato soup. I will have that. But, you know, Kraft single Wonder Bread, Campbell's tomato. No, not for me, dog. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't know. Like I said, I just don't those those warm, w- warm food is great on cold days. Yeah, we can agree on that. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's good individuals starting to get together and say look this is shit we can't keep doing this let's try something different I don't want to give you the impression that Glasgow is an impoverished wasteland filled with violent hooligans and gang members. An impression shared by many candy-ass Europeans for sure, and a reputation that many Glaswegians are only too happy to perpetuate. Let's face it, Detroit or New Orleans, most American cities make this town look like Club Med by comparison. Yep. Glasgow remains the region's no-bullshit zone. What I find most endearing in this town is that if you're a native, you're probably an expert at taking the piss. A high-level style of ball-busting that approaches an art form around here. Well, let's get to the back at work again, isn't it? You don't call that work you are. You're a glug and you're a gun and you're a goggle. No one excels more at deflating the pompous making fun of self-importance, turning even the darkest tragedy in a comedy than the Glaswegian. It's about a life, isn't it? That's if you could understand the <laughs> bastards. Super Mario Conte, he never does This foot. can no, be a challenge, a particularly boy, after a few boy, pints boy, of heavy or a couple of bottles of Buckfast. What a show of you are! Glasgow has a reputation as a hard-drinking, two-fisted town. Yeah. I've always found it to be this funny, very, very funny, funny town. I mean, just yeah, everybody's a natural very born Very dark humor. If you say in America, my father's died, mm-hmm. people immediately are so sympathetic. 
in Glasgow, if you say, my father's died, Glaswegian say, what size was his shoes? <laughs> <laughs> we have that. Janie Godley grew up in the East End, married into an organized crime dynasty, worked as a bartender, became a very famous playwright, author, and stand-up comedian. I thought I'd meet her here at Rogano's, a very old school institution. Thank you. Thank you. Janie's working some goat cheese thing with figs. For me, Scottish oysters are an irresistible impulse. Hi. They are magnificent, by the way. What a lot of people abroad don't understand is the women are the backbone of many of the communities because the men were always drunk mm -hmm. um, and working in the shipyards and dying young. And that still exists, Tony. The age expectancy is still 55. Oh my God. In Fallujah, Iraq, it's 65. <laughs> wow, it's a pretty extraordinary thing. That blows my mind. Like the, crazy. the age expectancy in America, like it's going wow. down a bit, but I think it's like 77, 78. Yeah. Um, I, I, it's a little higher in women, but you know, that's expected. But uh, from the Glaswegians I've talked to, uh, I, I, it makes sense that it's there's- 55. Uh, Holy crap, man. Yeah. Makes sense that there's, you know, the, the, a lot of the times the men are drunk and or in crime and the women are the backbone of uh that uh, everything else. So. Wow. Wow. That's 55 is very young. That's like a like a fucking like cicada lifespan. Like that's yeah. that's you're only here for a very short time. Mm -hmm. Party it up, live it up. Mhm. Mm Pretty much. Here for a a good time, not a long time. Yep. I get wow. it. I get it now, at least for that little part. Yeah, I know. And there's still a lot of crime. There's still drugs. There's still a lot of alcohol problems. But I think the fact that we are a bit shit helps us because we had the Commonwealth Games here. And I love that everybody tried not to shout in the street and swear and sell stolen goods in public. I love that they all had this covert operation of let's be nice for a week. I love that. <laughs> Main course, Janie goes for the pan-fried brill. But me, I can't pass up ocean liner continental classic from days gone by, like the fabulously unfashionable Tyrannosaurus Rex of seafood dishes, Lobster Thermidor. Ooh. Without irony, the lobster is Scottish, as is the cheese, the eggs, everything really. Man, it looks good. No, uh, do you have anything to say on the Glaswegian diet? The diet. I mean, it's really the story is yeah. that the that the uh, health wise, as far as uh, heart problems, right behind Tonga, yeah. for all time worst, least healthy. Yeah. It's a bad thing. It's really weird because when I was a kid, and we were poor. We ate fish, butter beans, potatoes. Then we would have liver and onions, and potatoes and cabbage and peas. And then somewhere from the mid 70s onwards, it just became crap. And now you've got a generation of women who don't know how to make a pot of soup. To be a real Glaswegian, Tony, mm -hmm. housewife, you have to be able to make a pot of soup. I can't make soup. The joke is apparently I'm good at sex. Sex takes five minutes, soup can take days, and it smells shit. And my husband's never asked for soup, so that works. <laughs> uh, uh, I like that woman. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, 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 Glasgow, Glasgow's definitely on my, my list now. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. Especially with the buskers there, and uh, oh, yeah. And the food, and you know, you yeah, get it. You and get soup. It. And soup. Well, apparently not anymore. Apparently but, not anymore. Oh uh, yeah. So yeah, I I, I, I hate soup, but I, I I could drink soup. But whatever. You, whatever. You, you just said you liked soup. Well, dude. I like. I I tolerate. I'm a soup tolerate tolerator. Oh God Almighty! I can't take you anywhere, man. I I'm not a big foodie guy, dude. I know you're not. I know. I, I'm not a big foodie guy. 
You know, yeah. Lobster Thermidor. That was on Lego Batman. That's all I know. That's the only thing I can I can trace that to. Yeah, and, and I'm, I'm over here slobbering like a dog over at that lobster. And oh. it does nothing for you. No, oh. I'm just like, oh, okay. They're sitting down, you know? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's like nice. we, we discussed before, you're here for the travel part. I'm here for both the travel and the food hey, part. there you go. That's it. <laughs> I, I eat because I, my body apparently requires it. So it's just so you don't die. Yes, so I don't die, man. Uh, it's it's like it you with food is like me with movies like yes it's, there it is it, yeah there we go we, we we understand each other now yep there it is we, we've yeah. been working on this for about three years at this point and we yeah. finally made there a breakthrough is. there it is yeah if, if you were ever like daniel have you ever tried this i was like no <laughs> no <laughs> so there you go that's that's our parallel that's our that's ours. We got that. Okay, yeah. we figured it out now. We figured it out. <laughs> God, man. Oh, man. There's a terrific music scene in Glasgow. The pubs are among the finest anywhere. They say Glaswegians have more fun at a funeral than people in Edinburgh <laughs> have at a wedding. Nice. That does invite, from time to time, admittedly, a fair amount of knuckle-headed behaviors. If you're looking for a beer and a beating, Glasgow will happily provide it. The toughness thing is no joke. If you've ever tried to choke a small Glaswegian into unconsciousness, as I have, long story, let me tell you, it's like wrestling with an angry fire plug. It's nearly impossible. Also, it hurts. Access to guns is extremely difficult here. So Scottish hoodlums, unable to dispatch their victims with the kind of speed and efficiency as we enjoy in the good old USA, has had traditionally to resort to the knife to do its maiming and killing. The old country way, one person at a time. The stabbing might not get more than a few lines down the column in the Glasgow papers. Because in this city of violence, ordinary stabbing is hardly news anymore. Where knife violence is an affliction, there must be a cure. Meet Mark Davies. He began his career working as a bouncer in some of the East Side's toughest drinking establishments, where he had plenty of opportunities to hone his skills. Now he runs Tactical Edge, teaching close combat and knife defense to UK special operators and security companies. Come at him with a knife, the overwhelming likelihood is that it will soon be hanging out of your ass. Generally, these courses start, come at me with a knife, and a guy comes <laughs> at you like it's Friday, it's Friday the 13th. Yeah. And pretty much nobody outside of Friday the 13th, in my experience, has ever come at anyone with it like this. Um, if someone does come, they're rushing at you mm -hmm. and with multiple, yeah. they're like in, a, yeah. in a manic Yes. Frenzy mm -hmm. of multiple uh, yeah. jabbing or slashing movements. Yes, your attacker has been affected by adrenaline. In such a state, the forebrain has started to shut down. Yeah, so they're no longer really capable of cognitive thought. So you tend to get these repeated lines of attack. You know, if they're going for the stomach, it tends to be a sewing machine kind of action. Is your first order of business deflecting or getting the damn knife away from them? Right. I'm either going to gain control of the weapon or go to a returning blade technique where I gain control of the weapon and return it to sender. Right. Yeah. Show me. <laughs> okay. The thing about knife defense is there's no, there's no magic bullet. Any technique can fail. Any technique can go wrong. And if there's multiple opponents, that can get a bit difficult as well. Yeah, that sort yep. of thing, yeah? Right. So, if we've got the knife held up close, okay, yeah? So I'm gonna clap, pull, hit. Right. Now I'm gonna force this thing back into your sternum repeatedly, what we call the woodpecker. Right. Yeah, now, okay? So, you know, two hands on, right. kick first, boot, back and forth. Right. Charge. That's it, charge. Honestly, really good to know if I'm ever in that situation where someone comes at me with a knife.
Yes. Don't be in that situation. Ever. Right. For, that's the that's step one is don't yes. be in that situation. But if I am, you know. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. 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 Hopefully you're not ever. But yes, yeah. pay attention, Spence. Yeah. <laughs> pay attention. Yeah. Hope all y'all are paying attention too. <laughs> Goodness. Yeah. So, ATM mugging. Okay. I'm going to pin your hand to me so I own the weapon. Right. And I'm going to slap backwards into the groin. Yep. So, I'm going to hit. Come up, grab. Yep. Now, I'm going to introduce point A with point oh, B. Oh, yeah, that's us. Now, <laughs> when I do that a few times, it's like taking a baked potato out of the microwave. It's going to be really hot. <laughs> You're going to let go. So, bang, 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 bang. Okay, it's a little bit more close in and right. surreptitious and everybody doesn't see it, yeah? So clear the weapon, just shift it to the side, knee him in the balls, straight under, wah! Return to sender. There that was an go. education, no problem. Really enjoyed that. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Last night in Glasgow, and enough with the deeper issues. Now, I want to go no deeper than the bottom of a bubbling cauldron of hot grease. <laughs> it's out there. It's calling to me. I want it now. A happy place from my past, where once I frolicked young and carefree in the field of friolated arts. The University Cafe, where I learned at the foot of the masters the Tao of hot fat and crispy batter. Yes, they do a deep fried Mars bar here and deep fried pizza. Been there, done that. But Carlo here and his twin brother have been keeping the Varecchia family tradition alive since 1918. And it ain't about no Mars bar. That right there, that seals the deal. I'm there not go, man. one night in Glasgow, two nights maximum. Minimum, yep. I should say. And if you eat all the food you want, three nights. Yeah, exactly. And, and I'll go uh, claim the body. <laughs> yeah, it won't be a knife that gets me. It'll be this right here. Bar. This is a lot more dangerous. <laughs> Good God. <sighs> I'm tempted to just go completely nuts for all of the things that I like, like pie, beans, and chips. Like, I don't even know what kind of pie, but I want it. The macaroni and cheese is tempting. I guess I'm doing. Couldn't resist that. Cheese Beano. I don't even know what that is, but I, I, I kind of want it. Ooh, sausage roll. I do like a good sausage. I order the fish and chips and some haggis. Paddock, battered and floating, adrift in a sea of mysterious, life-giving oil. The accumulated flavors of many magical things as it bobs like Noah's Ark, bringing life in all its infinite variety. Deep fried haggis, my personal favorite. Sinister sheep parts in tube form in this case. And if you don't like chopped up liver and lungs and all that good stuff, believe me, the curry sauce sets you right. The combination of french fries or chips in the local dialect with curry sauce and with cheese is perhaps a bro too far. Guy Fieri in a kilt. But what the hey? <laughs> I'm pretty sure God is against this. Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh. Mm. That's good. It doesn't eat well with a fork. You really got to pick this up. Mm. So ashamed. Mm. 
Is that iron brew? Yep. <sighs> oh, yeah, clean living. That's really one of life's great pleasures. Don't let them tell you otherwise. They're lying about you, Mr. Haggis. There was no more unfairly reviled food on Earth than Haggis. Its ingredients are, in fact, no more unusual or bizarre or unappetizing than any hot dog you ever ate. Well, how many anal glands are in a chicken nugget? I don't know, and I'm not suggesting there are anal glands in a chicken nugget, but would you be surprised if there were? I wouldn't be. We'll get to the bottom of this. Back to you, Wolf. All of that. I want all of that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I feel like there are there are parts of animals that I just you can taste is a little different. Not bad. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I've, unfortunately, I've I've eaten lots of things I don't like. <laughs> um, yeah, that's putting it lightly. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, I, I there's some there's some like the livers like I just can't. I can't. I, I've tried it. Yeah. I've tried it a lot. But I just can't get past it. If there's a choice between liver and literally anything else, I'm gonna go with anything else. Yeah, I'm with you there on liver. I've tried it, not a fan. Especially not only its taste, but knowing what it does in the body and what I've put my liver through. You yeah. know, I just but, yeah. It, but you know, hear me out though. If someone offered me something that's different, then I'll eat it. But right, if I right. had a choice to purchase something. That's yeah, I'm not right. It. Right. You, you got to, you know, you can't be, beggars. Beggars can't be choosers. In yes. That correct. Part. Uh, but that, that's honestly a good analogy. If you think about haggis as hot dog, because, you know, nobody knows what the fuck's in a hot dog. No. So if <laughs> if you no. if I can down multiple of those, especially in my in my area where, you know, a hot dog all the way is a delicacy. um then I guess I can down some haggis. Would you just a hot dog all the way? What does that mean? Oh, um, I mean, because <laughs> I'm right. like, huh? Is that a saying down there? Oh, I, I didn't. I didn't know. Uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, hot dog all the way, at least in my area, is uh, slaw, chili, mustard, and um, onion. Okay, that's that's what's that's what on on an all the way hot dog. It just Depending on where you are in the country, all the way might mean something completely different. It definitely got means it. something different in like Chicago. Yeah. Or, got it. Okay. Uh, New York. So. Okay. I just didn't know. I was like, what? What is he talking about? I was like, I don't even. Okay. Got it. Makes sense. Yeah. But anyway, haggis, I would eat it well, now. It's going to be fried. You know what I mean? Fried haggis in like, I guess, hot dog form. Yeah. Like, with curry like, sauce. That like, looks more appealing than if you type in haggis on like google and you'll see a picture right yeah yeah exactly this is more appetizing than what you find when you type haggis in on on the internet 100 percent Heading north out of Glasgow, Scotland quickly becomes something else. A savagely beautiful, harsh, but absolutely mesmerizing landscape that seems to have changed not at all for thousands, even millions of years. And across Loch Marie, inaccessible only by boat, one of the great isolated estates, Letter U. It's the favorite retreat of my friend, Adrian Gill. More widely known as A.A. Gill, he's the much feared and widely followed restaurant critic for the London Sunday Times. A regular columnist for a spectrum of magazines, author, <laughs> traveler, and one of the finest essayists of our time. Letter U, as it stands today, was built as a shooting lodge. Deer stalking like they do here is something from another era. 
but it persists in places like this, which both protect and cull deer populations. If you are, like us, of course, two murderous aristocrats looking to put some venison on the table, you need help. Professional help. And estates, like Letter U, come with a stalker. Stephen Miller has been working here for eight seasons now, both protecting the animals who live on it and helping people like us in the arduous and delicate task of sneaking up on them. We would, as gentlemen of leisure, require a cook. And Adrian has recommended the supremely well-suited Fiona Cullinane, who excels at this kind of Scottish traditional game cookery. Nice. For dinner, it's grouse. Shot, then hung until the already funky game bird gets pleasingly ripe. The birds are rubbed inside and out with salt and pepper, some fresh thyme jammed in the cavity. Browned in the pan, plenty of butter to baste with. In traditional game bird cookery of the British Isles, bread sauce is a must. We don't do this in America, but here, it's essential. Basically, it's milk, simmered with flavoring agent like an onion piquet, nutmeg, and bay leaf, then thickened with raspings of bread. Hmm. Grouse barded with bacon, then roasted in the oven. Nicely rare to medium rare, they're removed to rest and the pan deglazed with red wine, game stock is added, and the sauce reduced. Topped with watercress alongside some parsnips and beetroot. So explain what we're eating because this, this is, is as, as classic as it gets, right? Th and this is, this is specifically Scottish. This is a grouse, which is the only, the only truly wild game bird in Britain. They're the most highly prized as a sporting bird, they're the most difficult to shoot, uh, but more importantly, they're the most prized to eat. And this bread sauce thing, what, what is that? Bread sauce, which is so, you really have to grow up here to love this. It's like pottage, it's a, it's a sops. Mm -hmm. it's, a very, it's a very old dish, and it, but it goes very well with the, the, the grouse, are, uh, they, they're a very gamey, Meat. It's a very grown-up taste that is right. that is slightly slightly repellent, mm -hmm. but it, it it is within that it is particularly alluring. Right. It's and there is something also sexual about it that people right. don't often talk about. Right. Okay. So good. I I went to a vegetarian school. My my parents sent me to a vegetarian boarding school, and. I, so for nine years, the year after I left, I was a vegetarian. Nine years as a vegetarian? That's um, unthinkable to me. <laughs> and then I decided not to be. And I made the decision that if I was going to eat meat again, that I had to be prepared to do the whole business. Right. You had to be accountable. For all of it. For all of it. So I started getting fish with the guts in and gutting them and then... And then he go, and then and then in the end, you someone says, "Well, come and you know, you want to eat it, come and kill it." And you go, "Well, then I have to do that as well." And when I started doing it, it was like coming home. Wow. Oh man, that would shook shook shake me. Yeah. Well, test your test your your metal, to say the least. You know, test your. How how meat how team meat are you? Yeah, how badly do you want that uh whatever that bird was that looked really good by the way? I would try that in an instant. But they say it's off putting. You know what I mean? Like that's gamey plus off putting, that's a very fine line. That's a very fine line. You know, we, we all have our ways that we, we experience thrills. Mine is through the culinary sense. So please go get this. I'll do please it. Please go get this. Please film it. Bring a bucket just in case. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if my Home Depot bucket will fit on the plane. Right, but it's we'll carry see. on. Carry it's on. Carry on. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, I mean, it's just, you know, ga gaminess. Game is just different. It's just a different class of meat. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, I've had the venison, I've had goose, I've had duck, you know, but venison is interesting. 
to say it this. is yes i've had it before and it's like if you like beef like you'll like it i would say um i've also had alligator before um what else i've had duck duck it's like dark meat chicken basically yeah, yeah. yeah. um but yeah but grouse interesting the yeah. the the flavor the flavor that he's he's talking about is just i think i have to ease into something like that you yeah, know what i mean yeah, yeah like i would have to be there on that island <laughs> like not have any kind of stores around me i'm like okay let's do this then yeah goes back to our conversation about liver like yeah. if you, you have to be a good house guest yeah first of all yeah yeah and that's the thing with being on the hill. Until the 19th century, the Scottish Highlands were seen by many as a mysterious, hostile, and dangerous land. Populated, when populated at all, by scary-ass barbarians. Descendants of the terrifying Picts, tribes so ferocious, so extravagant in their violence and toughness that even the Roman legions decided not to mess with them and instead built a wall, <laughs> hoping to just keep them out and away from civilized society. Later, hunting estates like this were home to tenant farmers who scratched out a living growing oats and potatoes. Owned by landed gentry, by various royals, the Highland clans Mackenzie, McDonnell, and McLeod, to name a few, later by newer money, fabulously wealthy foreigners. Today, around half the land in Scotland is owned by fewer than 500 people. Wow. It's an anachronism, dismaying to some, I grant you, but seductive as well. Because who wouldn't do this if they could? Enjoy this kind of rugged solitude from the comfort of a warm, inviting 17th century lodge. Warm one's legs by the fire, play a little snooker, enjoy a fine single malt or two, a substantial game meal, maybe another whiskey perhaps. Contemplate the mysteries of the universe under a starry sky. Then to sleep into the arms of Morpheus, to rise in the morning as bringer of death. Stephen and Adrian keep calling it the hill, but that ain't no hill I ever seen. It's a behemoth, an endless range of behemoths. One mountain giving way to a moor, giving way to another mountain, then more, then more. There might be a hill somewhere in there, but it's probably between mountains after a five mile uphill walk. And though I am to be modest in the best shape of my life of late, it's a daunting hike. The climb gradual, then steep. The footing ranging from rocky to spongy and wet. Mile after mile. Me trying to look cool, make it seem like this is nothing unusual. But really, I'm dying. <laughs> uh, and some beautiful uh, scenery there. Hell but yeah. my God, it would be a hell of a hike. Hell yeah. Oh my God. I couldn't imagine it. Then you bag a deer. Then you have mm -hmm. to bring it back. Mm-hmm. Damn. <laughs> It'll make a man out of you. That's for damn sure. Damn. I need some, what, mossy oak four-wheeler action right there, dude. Yeah, at least some, <laughs> a Jeep, a Subaru, yeah, something. something. Oh, my God. We walk the highlands for hours. Our stalker, Stephen, finally identifies a red stag of suitable age and size, one ready in the parlance to be taken off the hill. Getting in a range without scaring him off, however, is another challenge. Just to come back. We need to circle around the mountain to close the distance. Great, but there's not a lot I can do, you know? You've got to get past them, like. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we go slowly. Copyright, probably.
Yeah, probably for copyright. <laughs> there we go. Just pretend we're hikers at the moment. He hasn't even got a bobble hat. What? If you put a bobble hat on, the deer think you're a hiker. <laughs> <laughs> We got the context. Yeah, we got the context. Stick it nice and steady. It's unsafe, remember. Just take your time. Good shot right there, dude. Yeah. That's a nice dog. Ten points. Is that good? Wow. He's never gonna get any better. Do you want to use your knife? Yeah. For shooting your first red stag in Scotland, we all get blooded. Oh. Oh. It's best if you close your eyes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, OK. And, and, and the rule is you have to leave it on yeah. all day. Oh, come on. Well, that's glorious. Yeah, that's well, it's right. a right of package, right of right of package, right of passage. I was <laughs> I was thinking about how are they packing the meat there? Like, how are they bringing it back? How how are you harvesting the deer there? Like, dang, you you probably take it back to base camp and uh, do it there. <sighs> that's some. That's a hell of a. I guess a field breakdown right there, dude. Yeah, mm. and. Something tells me that this might be the Scots taking the piss. Like, I hope so. I hope it is. I hope so. I hope after he left, like, can you believe he let us do that shit? Like, yeah. <laughs> ugh, whatever. <laughs> whatever. It is what it is. When in, yeah. I guess, when in Rome. That's yeah. a bad, that's a bad. When in the Highlands of Scotland. When in the Highlands of Scotland. Yeah. Hmm. Again, what we said before. Yeah. We knew of using doing. Highland ponies. As getting oh. vehicles up here would be both difficult and destructive, the estate has maintained the tradition of using Highland ponies to retrieve the stock deer. There we go. They're bred to be strong and trained to do this work. They'll likely make it back sooner than we will. Thanks, chaps. We'll catch you yeah. later on at some point. Yeah. Good boys through. I'd thought coming up, my legs burning, I can't wait till that nice, easy downhill walk back. But as I soon find out, the walk down is even harder. Knees screaming, face crusted with dried blood, I'm looking forward to a warm fire, a strong whiskey, and some good country-ass cooking. Go. So 
So what do you fancy with the venison? Stewed with wine? They always you marinated juniper and I all of that. I, I, you know, super simple. Okay, we'll do that. Hmm. It's made from the fond red wine. Okay, we'll do that. This is gonna, this is gonna be annoying. Well, I mean, as long as everyone knows that we all know what they did. Yeah, it's right, displayed on the screen yeah. here. Yeah, just fucking. The venison is seasoned with salt and pepper and rosemary, seared in duck fat, and then into the oven. A pan sauce made from the fond red wine and deep game stock, sweetened with currant jelly, and finished with a mellowing knob of whole butter. Nice. Served with clapshot, basically mashed turnips and potatoes. You have to traditionally wear the 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 zipper mask or the leather mask <laughs> to do that and and you and you send them notes beforehand saying i'm watching you i know where you live good <laughs> 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 oh. god that looks good we deserve this Oh, we've worked for that, huh? Yeah. The, literally, the, 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 the greatest feat of strength of my entire life. Never at any time in my entire life have I done anything remotely so physical over a sustained period of time. Really? Never. Look how well you look. At no point previously in my life would I have been able to do it. Thank you, guys. Cheers. The best yeah. of health, folks. All the very Bye. best. Sign you up. Good shot. Hill's now a safer place. A safer place for ramblers. <laughs> it's a lot safer now that we're not on it, man. I came to Scotland this time to shoot an animal in the heart, to take part, to be fully culpable in a practice nearly as old as these hills. You walk this country, stalking an animal across the rocks and wet heather, you feel little has changed from how your distant ancestors must have searched for their food, with a rifle, with a spear, with a club. I dragged my knuckles up a hill, and like my ape-like predecessors, returned tired happy and covered in blood. Everything changes, nothing changes at all. Man, oh man. Hey, that was good, man. That, that was, was I, I like this, I like this. Surprise, I was sh shocked by what I, Learned from like both Glasgow and the Highlands, and this is the humanity coming out uh, of it, and united by food and being human beings with wants and feels and needs. Yep, yep. I like it because it's it's not. He doesn't talk about food. He talks about why food. And context. I like that. There's context to the food, and there's context to the people that he talks with. I like that. I like that. The the food is is part of the journey that yeah. he takes, and I like and I like that. That brings a different element than someone just like, oh my god, this is great. Like, well, fuck yourself. Like, yeah, there's more to that than just, yeah. hey, this tastes real good. Love what is it? The Guy Fieri thing that he does is I think it's his shtick. All right, I get it, but I like this approach a lot better. It's or more informative. Or insert any food influencer on TikTok. Oh god, I hate that. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> And that's why I'm trying to draw inspiration from Anthony Bourdain about how to put together a story that's not just about food, not just about travel, but the humans. Yeah, the yeah I like it. It's like an interesting story with food in it. I like that because, like you said, I feel like at some point during, let's say, a food thing, you've said it all. Don't need to just fill in that space with words. 
Right. And he that this was master class. This was talk about the food, talk about why and what's around it. I, I I really enjoyed that. That's probably the best food show I've seen since Good Eats. Good Eats is just entertaining. This is just history. This is everything. Right, is, right. I like that. Right. It, Good Eats is education and entertaining, but I get what you're saying. It spans upon that. Yes. Because not, not once did they tell you how to cook it. They just told you what it is. And it, 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 do, it doesn't have to be that complicated. But no, this is great, man. Let's yeah. see how everyone else likes it. I really hope that everyone else likes it because I want to do more of this. Like, yeah. those watching, comment below the next episode of something Anthony Bourdain did that you want us to check out, whether it be Parts Unknown or No Reservations or A Cook's Tour or anything else Anthony Bourdain did. I want him to be a part of this or, channel. Or, if this is your first time watching, what is interesting or what drew you in or just i need i need feedback mm -hmm. i need to know if this is if this is if i'm off because i don't usually check this kind of stuff out right right not that too I, know. <laughs> I was thinking that that's not what popped into my head no we're good man this was actually awesome so i agree thanks for watching y'all yep. after those comments there's somewhere on to subscribe and watch another video what does it do after this dan unplug and go travel if you can hell yeah. see y'all next time later Fellas, we could be that mistake. Let's do this.